Hey everyone, hope you guys are having a great day today. Today we're going to be taking a look at a problem called deep equals. So deep equals is nothing more than taking two values and comparing them against each other to see if they're actually equal to each other. So these values could be primitives, they can be arrays, they can be objects, they can be NAN objects, or they can just be none themselves. So there's a bunch of edge cases to look out for with this problem. So watch until the very end as we will cover every single edge case for it. And if you're currently studying for front-end engineering interviews, I suggest checking out my website called frontendlead.com where we have a comprehensive guide on how to study for front-end engineering interviews. I personally have accumulated over 75 coding questions that are asked by top tech companies, plus another 10 system design questions. So check out frontendlead.com if that's something you find interest. And let's get started with the video. The complicated part with this problem is all of the different test scenarios you have to account for. What I've gone ahead and done here is I've actually taken all of the test cases and I've gone ahead and created an entire test case for what we're gonna be building. I'll get through each individual tests in a moment, but this test case is actually a framework that I've built. And actually building test cases are also a very common front end engineering question. Um, up here is how I've built this entire test framework. And I actually explain how to build this framework in my course as well called friendly.com. So if you're interested, check out that course. So let's build a simple example to start off with. So what do we want to take into account? We're going to pass in two arguments to our deep equals function. So we'll call it function deep equals. And we're going to pass in a value one and a value two into our deep equals function. So instead of just jumping into the solution right away, let's pseudocode what we're actually gonna be doing here. So we wanna check for primitives, is NAN values, null values, undefined, the simpler values first, and then we can go into verifying our arrays or objects and so forth. So step one, verify NAN values. Step two, verify null values. Step three, verify primitives. Step four, verify arrays. And finally, step five, verify objects. And if we pass all those verifications, then we can just return true at the end. Cool. So let's start with verifying NAN values. So what we can say is if number dot is NAN value one or number dot is NAN value two, then we simply just compare them. Return, does value one equal to value two? Cool, that'll take care of our NAN clause. Now we can think about verifying null values. It'll work exactly the same way as verifying NAN, so we can actually just copy that. But instead of just checking for is NAN, we can say if value one equals to null or if value two equals to null, then we simply just compare the two. And I think I need a closing bracket right here. Cool. Now, why do we wait for primitives later after checking NAN values or none values? Well, let's take a look at how we check for primitives, right? We'll say if value one does not equal to object and I need to a type of here or type of value two does not equal to an object then again we just compare them like before but keep in mind if you actually print type of value one and you're passing in null it's actually going to return type of object because everything technically in JavaScript underlining is just an object. That's why we're checking null explicitly before. And we're also checking NAN explicitly before, before we jump into checking our primitives. 
So cool, this takes care of our simpler base cases, our primitives, null values, and in values, and luckily undefined are its own type, so it'll fall into our step three. So step four is to verify arrays. Now in this case, we wanna make sure both value one is an array and value two is an array. If they both are in arrays, then we can go ahead and do stuff. So if say if array, that is array value one and array that is array value two, as long as they're both arrays, now we can go ahead and just verify if they're deep, deep equal to each other. One quick check we can do before we verify that is we can make sure the length of each array is equal. If not, return false. So if value one dot length does not equal to va value two dot length, return false. Cool. Now, if the lengths are equal to each other, we need to iterate through at least one of the arrays and verify that all the values between the first array are equal to the values into the second array. So we can actually do this by using recursion. So we'll do a simple for loop. We'll say for var i equals zero, i is less than value one dot length, i plus plus. And now we can do a check here. We'll say if not deep equals value one, i and then value 2 i is our second argument if this returns false then we simply just return false because remember as we're iterating through one of the lists we are technically iterating through the other as well because the the lengths are the same then we pass them into our existing deep equals function it goes inside and starts comparing each individual values. And if any of these cases fail, it'll just return false. If it runs through successfully, then we can just return true. And that will take care of verifying arrays. Now, there's one other check we wanna make sure of. We wanna say if array, that is array value one or array that is array value two. If either of these are an array, then we wanna return false because we've already taken care of verifying if value one array is equal to value two. This could occur if we do pass in one array to argument one, but not to the other. Uh, as in the previous case, we're checking as long as both are equal to each other. Finally, we wanna check and verify objects. They work a bit similarly to arrays. Um, so what we can do here is we can grab the keys from each value one and value two. So we'll say, so we can say const val one keys equals to object dot keys value one. And then we can copy and paste this for value two as well. Cool. And now again, like what we've checked before, if the lengths don't equal to each other, so value one keys doesn't equal to value two keys, we simply just return false. Cool, now we know that value one keys length matches value two keys length. One thing I wanna call out for step five, unlike our previous cases, we're actually not checking if value one or value two is an object. And actually we don't have to check this because we've already done all of our checks prior. So the order actually matters here. So we've already checked if value one keys dot length does not equal to value two keys dot length. If that is true, then we return false. So now we're checking if value one keys dot length is equal to value two keys dot length. If they're not equal to each other, then we return false. Now we can iterate through each object and verify if the keys and values match each other. So now we'll iterate through each one. So we'll say four let key in value one. And then we'll define two variables here. We'll say let val one value equals to value one key. And similarly, we wanna get value two val as well. So we'll say let val two 
value equals to value to key. So now we've gotten the, va the key and values for both value one and for value two. What we wanna first check is if deep equals val one value and val two value. So if deep equals fails for either of these values, we'll just return false. Otherwise, we're already returning true at the bottom. One thing that we also want to take into account for here, we're checking the values here, but we're not actually checking if our key from value one exists in value two. So we can also take that into account. We'll say if value two, remember value two is the argument that we're passing in, dot index of key, and remember, key is just nothing more than the keys inside value one. As long as this is less than zero, that means we want to return false. So that just verifies that the key that we're looking for exists in the keys of value two. And if it doesn't exist, then we just return false. Cool. So we've actually taken all of the cases into account. Let's just kind of review what we just did. Step one. We verified all NAN values. Step two, we verified null values. Step three, we verified primitives. Step four, we verified arrays. And lastly, step five, we verified objects. Now, I wanna show you some of the test cases I've written here. I'm gonna comment this out. Let's just try running this initially, make sure nothing fails. Okay, looks like we failed with an error message, NAN, deep equals failed. This is actually good that it failed because it helped us catch some errors. NAN is unique as we want to make sure both value one is NAN and value two is NAN, not using an or operator. So we can switch this to an and, and because both will be NAN, then we don't need to actually strictly check the individual values. We can just return true here. So we, now we can try running this. And we fail again, and this time it's failing on arrays. So let's take a look at what the array is failing on. So the problem here is we're actually passing an individual value of an integer two rather than i. So that's a typo on my part. So let's switch that, run this. Now we're failing on value two index of is not a function on the object. So here it's saying value two index of key is not a function. So actually index of is only applicable to lists or arrays, not objects. So instead of saying value two here, we want to check for value two keys. Cool. So we have gone ahead and completed all of our test cases. Now, like I mentioned before, this problem is a little bit tricky because there's a bunch of different edge cases and scenarios to account for. So actually rewriting some tests for this problem really helps you debug where your problems could lie. And that's it. Now you learn how to solve the deep equals problem. I hope this video is helpful. I know it's a little bit complicated, but take it step by step, break it down into pseudocode like I mentioned before, and even write some unit tests for it as it's really helpful to help you debug each and every line of code and figure out where the problem actually lies. If you guys found this video helpful, please consider subscribing and pressing the like button below as it really helps out the channel a lot. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you.